This video is sponsored by Storyblocks. If you're waiting until you have enough space to properly film your YouTube videos, then stop waiting. I make almost all of my YouTube videos in this 70 square foot space, and I can make it look much bigger than that, and I'm gonna show you how. It's really important to me that my videos are visually dynamic, and that I've got a few different backgrounds or scenes that I can rotate through to switch it up. I really think that it helps to break up the video a little bit and keep the viewer more engaged. It doesn't feel so like same old, same old as I just sit and talk to you for the next 15 minutes. So I've created five separate filming spots within this little end of my condo, which is my first tip for you. As much as possible, even if you are working with a small space, I really want to encourage you to include as many different angles as possible. This is one of the biggest tips that I have for keeping your viewers engaged, increasing that view duration, and ultimately helping your videos in the algorithm. But I think a lot of creators think that they are held back by the size of their filming space from being able to do that. But I have figured out how to make my videos visually dynamic by just literally using every single spot that I have in my house to sit down as a different filming background. But if you don't even have that option, because I am really lucky to have a lot of natural light, if you only have one background that really looks good for a YouTube video, you could consider adding a second angle. You don't even need to have two cameras for this. You can literally just deliver your script or your outline to your camera in one position, and then you can stop recording and physically move that same camera to your second position and then deliver the lines that you want to have in that second position and then cut between them in editing. I know, I know it sounds really dorky, but like that's actually the easiest way to do it. <laughs> Another tip that I have for getting multiple angles, even in a small space, is to shoot your videos in 4K if you can, and then punch into a tighter angle every so often. Honestly, I will even do this with 1080p footage, but it just means that I will only ever crop into 125% when I'm shooting in 1080p, whereas if I shoot in 4K, I will crop all the way into 200%, just to maintain like the video quality. But when I do shoot in 4K, what I'll do is I'll set my camera up a little bit further away from me so that I kind of have one wide view and then I have the more cropped in view that I'll cut to for emphasis basically. It's very easy to do in Premiere Pro later. You can just select the clip, go over to the effect controls and then change your scale to 200%. And then even if you shoot in 4K, then you just export everything at 1080p and then the quality looks consistent across all of your clips. So whether you have a big studio or not, these are all great ways to get multiple different views, different angles, different scenes scenes into your video to make it look more engaging. So as you can see, even in a small space, there is a lot that you can do to make your videos more visually interesting. But even if you can't have the most extensive or like beautiful set for your videos or you're working with what you've got at home, you can still make your videos visually interesting by incorporating a lot of B-roll, which is my next tip for you if you create videos in a small space. There's lots of ways that you can incorporate B-roll in your videos. I like to record my own B-roll every so often. So just set up the camera and do some kind of everyday life action. Obviously you want your B-roll clips to be relevant to the topic of your video. So when I am planning out and scripting my videos, I like to keep a running shot list of potential visual representations of what I'm saying. Cause ideally there's not a lot of me just like describing stuff to you. I want to be able to show it in a visual way while I'm talking. So I'll make notes about that while I'm planning the video so that when I'm shooting, I can gather all that B-roll. That obviously keeps the videos more interesting, but even if you can't shoot your own B-roll, you can incorporate some awesome footage from the sponsor of today's video, Storyblocks. If you haven't heard of Storyblocks before, it is a awesome solution for YouTube creators because it is a stock media library that you get one unlimited access subscription to, and you can download all of the stock footage, animation templates, and music that you might need for your YouTube videos. And Storyblocks makes it super easy. Like I said, it's just one subscription. There's no additional fees for licensing or like a la carte pricing or anything like that. And everything you download from Storyblocks, you have permission to use in your YouTube videos. I've personally been obsessed with the new Storyblocks Premiere Pro plugin. So I love to edit my YouTube videos in Premiere Pro and Storyblocks has this awesome plugin where it's just like an additional window inside Premiere that you can just click over to and right away start searching for the stock footage that you need. So it makes the workflow super smooth. And seriously, whatever B-roll you might need for the video you're editing right now, with that plugin, like it's just a few clicks away from being on that timeline. So especially if you're trying to make your videos more visually dynamic, but you're dealing with limited space for filming, I think Storyblocks is gonna be your best friend. So you can sign up for yourself using the link 
in my description. Trust me, you won't regret it. It's gonna be a total game changer for your content. My third tip for shooting YouTube videos in a small space is to make sure that you have good lighting. Just because you don't have a massive studio to film your YouTube videos in doesn't mean that they can't be well lit. Now, I'm really lucky to have the big windows that I do, so I shoot my videos mostly with natural light, and if you can do that too, it's a huge asset, it's so much easier. So if you can find anywhere in your home, no matter how small it is, that has nice lighting, try to film in that space. But if that's not possible, you can also use artificial light. And these don't need to be massive, like softbox studio lights either. I love this one, it's the Aperture ALF7, and it's so small and portable. This is actually the main light that I use when I'm filming YouTube videos when I'm traveling in my camper van. I just set it up on an additional tripod and then there are batteries that you can plug into this, like the Sony L-Series batteries work with this light. But they're very expensive and I, I don't own any, but you can plug in just a USB battery bank, which a lot of us have kicking around. So you can just plug that in, that will be the battery for your light. And the cool thing about this particular light is that you can set the color temperature and the brightness. So I love being able to adjust the color temperature because you can make it match whatever natural light you do have. Because that's one problem when you're mixing natural and artificial light. I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but usually in my YouTube videos, all of the overhead lights in my apartment are turned off because they don't match the natural light coming in the window. But with this Aperture ALF7, I can change the color temperature so that it matches the light I already have. And then I basically just set it up to bounce off of a white surface, which for me, I have lots of white walls everywhere. So I just use that as my reflector surface, which works really well because hot tip, if you just point the light towards you, you'll probably have really harsh shadows. But if you bounce it off of a wall, it will be a lot more diffused. So for example, right now you can see the light is bouncing off the wall towards me. There's not a lot of like crazy shadows going on, but if I turn it around and point it right at me, it's a little bit more harsh. I feel like you can kind of tell that I've got like this spotlight on me. So it's a little bit nicer if you bounce it off of the wall, especially because I'm just using it as a fill light um, to pair with my window light. So if you're struggling with lighting in your small space, highly recommend a little light like that. It's linked in the description if you want. So hopefully I've been able to prove to you that you don't need a big space and certainly not a dedicated studio to film high quality YouTube videos. There are so many techniques and tools that you can use in the smallest of spaces that I use when I'm filming in my van, for example, that allow me to create still nice looking and interesting to watch YouTube videos even with space limitations. But here's the thing, making good videos for YouTube is not just about the quality of your actual video file, it's also about the quality of your storytelling. So if you wanna learn more storytelling strategies that will help increase your click-through rate, increase your view duration, and ultimately help your videos get more views, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out this video next. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having adventures and following your dreams, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.